made of different metals. The one on the extreme right, in this case, is a, is a soft iron. The one in the middle is just brass. And the one on the left is hardened steel. It's a piece of uh, uh, steel which I've hardened. Now, the idea is you use the softer ones, of course, charged with grinding powder. And uh, they enable you to uh, uh, remove metal. And, of course, the hardened one is uh, um, uh, uh, for polishing or putting the final polish on. Um, now, the, it, they're used in conjunction with a runner, which I've made. Uh, it's just a little uh, uh, runner that goes in the tailstock, and uh, it's got a uh, roller uh, fitted to it, which is um, arranged in such a way that the edge of the roller is in line, roughly, with the centre of the runner. And uh, I'll have to... Uh, stop the camera uh, and um, uh, set up on the lathe but I'll show you if I can just how um, how you can polish with this uh, and grind down uh, either dead parallel or a, or a slight taper uh, and uh, enables you to get in corners and to uh, produce a good finish um, without um, uh, in, in, in quick time without uh, uh, a lot of uh, risk of uh, going, uh, going or, or producing a, an angle that you, you, you didn't want. So uh, if you'll just bear with me a moment, I'll stop the camera. And uh... Right, now we've got the uh, lathe set up uh, to polish something with the wigwag. I'm not going to run the lathe, but um, you'll be able to see just exactly what happens here. I've got a, this is an old English lever centre wheel which has a very worn um, bottom pivot. Now under normal circumstances to grind that uh, bottom pivot to uh, be able to resurface that bottom pivot would be a very difficult operation if uh, uh, you, uh, uh, to avoid touching the wheel with uh, your burnisher, your uh, um, lapping uh, uh, strips or your burnisher now but as you can see with the wigwag I think you can just about see on the camera that it's possible to move the uh, the um, uh, soft metal uh, grinding lap relatively easily over the full length of the pivot because all you've got to concentrate on is the um, keeping the um, uh, edge of the lap parallel to the wheel so you can run the you can run the lap backwards and forwards on the um, on the pivot without touching the wheel and you know obviously marking the wheel now uh, I'll pro draw it away a bit you can see the action the roller uh, on the on the, uh, at the other end that the, that the lap is also bearing on supports it and keeps it you know at the right height so all you've got to concentrate on is just steady even strokes in and out while you uh, while you remove metal and you'll be surprised how quickly the metal will come off you start off with uh, varying grades of uh, oilstone dust coming down to, if you want to right down to diamantine and you can produce a, a very fine finish absolutely parallel without any difficulty at all now say for argument's sake you didn't want to do a parallel pivot you wanted to do a uh, the, you were wanting to polish the tapered arbor on the bottom of a balance staff to, uh, you know, it was a high grade staff for a chronometer or something like that, and you wanted to uh, uh, polish that area and get that, uh, keep that taper exactly right, or you you were you wanting to uh, remove a little bit of metal so that you've got a steel roller that's got to go on, and you want it to be an absolutely perfect fit. Once again, the wigwag to the rescue, fine grinding powder to start with. And uh, by adjusting the uh, roller in the tailstock, you can alter the angle of the wigwag like this, you see. You can just m move the r r uh, roller round and you can alter the angle. So you can set it to any angle you want. It'll polish at any angle you require, um, which um, uh, is very helpful. And also, if, for argument's sake, you want to polish the cone shape of a conical balance pivot, now all you have to do then is you draw you you allow yourself a bit more space so as you can move up and down with the wigwag like this and you run it at an angle you set it at an angle like that you can take the very sharp corner off of the 
off of the uh, uh, polishing shell or shovel as the Americans call it and uh, that will enable you to polish the cone part, cone shaped part of the pivot. Now um, it, it does fill the gap between the Jacko tool and the um, you know and just hand polishing or setting up with a, a rotating lap you know to lap the pivots which really for a watchmaker you know is a lot of work and uh, it you know it's got to be a very special job that uh, justifies that amount of work but you can produce excellent finish and uh, you know with with in in economic time with a device like this and it's um, well worth making making one up um, just to um, have the facility readily available so uh, there we are i hope that's uh, popularized the <laughs> popularized the wigwag or got you thinking about it anyway it's uh, it's a useful little tool. Um, I think it more or less covers the odds and ends which you won't, which you will have missed by not being at the lecture. But um, anyway, thank you all for uh, those of you who have <laughs> for showing as much interest as to want a copy of this video. And uh, perhaps uh, you'll encourage me to do something else. I'm open to suggestions. If there's anything else you'd like uh, um, to have a video of, if it's a practical proposition. It's, I've, enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed making the video and uh, giving the demonstration at the branch. So um, perhaps, uh, perhaps we might, uh, you might hear from me again. Uh, so thank you all. 